Hi, everyone. Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today, we're going to talk about industrial noise. Not probably everyone's favorite topic. I, I get that. But we get a lot of calls every day from uh, people who are in industrial settings. Uh, let's use an example that we got a call from the other day. It was um, these 3D printers. They're quite large, the industrial ones. I mean, the ones we use you know, in, in our homes and stuff like that are small and stuff, but they're limited. But these these industrial uh, 3D printers are quite large, you know, big footprint. So maybe 100 square feet each, 10 by 10 feet, something like that, eight foot high. And they, you know, they have fans and they have intakes and outtakes and air moving all the time and machinery moving all the time. And you're going to have four, six, eight of them in a room usually. So pressure levels can go up. It's usually not the low frequency pressure levels. It's It's more of the above 100, 125 cycles that we have to deal with. But when you have a lot of sources, and let's consider these machines as sources of sound, noise, if you will, filling the room, then we have to decide you know, how we're going to treat it. So what we usually do in most of these situations is they, they don't want to spend a ton of money treating it. They don't want to get, you know, speech intelligibility ratios. They don't want to be able to necessarily um, be able to communicate that easily with each other, like in a classroom. But they do want the noise level lowered. And OSHA, you know, the governing agency uh, that regulates these issues, is very strict about uh, having noise levels too high for too long a period of time and exposing workers to that. And, and that's valid, you know, that you have to be very, very careful. Headphones is a good example. These earbuds, stay away from them. Don't put those things in your ears. Pressure levels inside your ears from using those, I can't even imagine what, what it's like. So stay away from anything like that that seals the ear, doesn't let energy get out. So the bottom line here is it's all about treating enough square footage. So in these industrial situations, we have to have, we have lots of noise, we have high levels. So we have to have lots of square foot coverage. Secondly, along with that approach, we have to use the right rate and level of absorption. So we must measure. We must measure the noise. We must measure the noise over seven days, just like we do for a studio, a new studio build. We must measure the noise in all areas of the room. And once you get all of that data, then you're able to provide kind of a map of the source, the machines, and the energy issues that you have in the room. And then what we do is we focus the treatment as close to the machinery as we can because a lot of these places are on limited budgets and they can't really afford to treat the whole room. So we localize where the noise is coming from and then we treat the closest boundary surfaces to that. So just remember those of you out there that have the industrial noise situation, it's going to take a lot of square footage of coverage and a lot of measurement and qualifying before we actually come up with a treatment approach to you. So just keep that in mind. Square footage is the name of the game uh, when you're trying to uh, control noise in an industrial situation. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.